can be a nice, uh, slow, gradual um, wake up and kind of introduction into our week. So settle on the back. Uh, you might want to just check that you have a wee bit of space around you. We'll do a little bit of rolling on the sides. So if there's things that you want to clear away, so it's more comfortable. Have a little wiggle, just kind of wiggle your hips, move them, rock them sideways. See if there's a little wiggle that can come into your ribs. Or what about your head, rolling it a bit from side to side. And then after that, little bit of a, like a stimulation through the back line. See if we can take a moment of stillness. So your feet could stay on the mat, your legs could be long. There's a good position for knees resting against each other, feet a bit wider. See how that feels. That can uh, relieve or release the lower back and the groin area. Take a breath and uh, let it out through the mouth. So the exhale can get a little bit longer. And next breath in through the nose. Just notice where can you feel the breath. And next breath out could be also through the nose if that is comfortable. Just one more where we are really kind of conscious and aware. The movement of the ribs perhaps and the wee bit of a more settling that can come in through the exhale. We'll start with the pelvic rock movement. So when you're ready, the knees could separate your hands, can stay on the lower abdomen for a moment so that you can feel the movement of the pelvis. So your lower back is pressing onto the ground. That's your exhale and the lower back is arching away from the ground. That's your inhale. Find that rocking movement. I love to start very kind of easefully moving like water, more fluid, smooth. Having that kind of slow, gentle start. You could pause for a moment at the end of the inhale to sense the lower back muscles. These are the area that's contract, con um, contracting and the front of the belly is opening. And you could do the same at the bottom of your exhale, noticing the now the front body is contracting and the back body is broadening. Now to add a little bit of arms to it, you can take your cactus arm so you can um, press the, the uh, backs of the hands onto the ground. When you're arching the lower back away, palms are facing up towards the ceiling. And as you press the lower back onto the ground, let your fingertips point downward towards the feet, the palms most likely are not going to come onto the ground, but you might feel your backs of the shoulders coming off the ground. So you could go a few rounds here, adding that little rotational movement for the shoulders as well. I'll go a couple of more rounds. Beautiful. Next time the hands are up, just open, uh, straighten the elbow so the arms go out to the sides and wide. We take the feet a little bit wider, maybe they even step off the edges of your mat. And we'll begin with uh, rocking from side to side, so letting the thighs get heavy, dropping the thighs over to the right, letting the head roll to the left, bringing the knees back and letting the weight of the legs drop over to the left, head rolls to the right. Play with the breath of coming into that movement on the inhale and returning through the center on the exhale.
And just like with the pelvic rock, I'm suggesting we start with softness and ease in a sense that I really feel the weight of my thighs dropping towards gravity that begins the movement. And when the knees come back, there's a little bit of engagement through the center to bring the knees back. Next time when you're on the right side, I'll just add a little bit. So on the right side, feel your left knee, left foot on the ground and press the big toe side of the left foot a little bit onto the ground while you're reaching towards the foot end of your mat through your left knee. So your left side of your pelvis will lift a little bit more so the whole pelvis will roll a little bit more over to the right but keep your left arm anchored. So you feel now more tension through that top side of the body. That's your breath in. Release that action coming back through the center, dropping the knees to the left, and then finding that same action on the right side. And you can do that any amount. I want you to find still ease and softness, even though we've added a little bit of action, <laughs> a little bit of intentional tension that we're creating through that side body connection. So go a few more rounds. And I'll continue with the same movement, but I'll change my arms upwards. So rather than out from the shoulders, they come a little bit higher up. And of course, you can find um, anywhere that feels good for your shoulders. So a similar thing, and I'll add a little bit of reach through the fingertips. So the knee, the side where the knee is reaching down on that side, the fingertips are reaching up. So maybe even your shoulder comes off the mat a little bit. I'll go a few more times. See if you can be a little bit like a cat stretching in the morning. Beautiful. Let's come through the center. Release your arms down for a moment. Take the feet back onto the mat. Take a one round of arching the lower back and pressing the lower back onto the ground. Then hugging the knees in for a moment, one hand on one knee, other hand on the other knee and having a little bit of a rocking from side to side. Let your head kind of loll along with it. And then bringing the feet back onto the mat. We'll see if we can use now this movement as a way to roll a little bit more <laughs> to the side. So the same windshield viper movement with the arms higher up. So let's start all by dropping the knees to the right. As you reach through that left knee, as you reach through the left fingertips, begin to circle the left hand around you. So you curl over onto your right side. The feet can stay where they are. And then you slide your left hand back up. There's a reach through the side body and that curls you back onto your back. And then you drop the knees to the left. The right fingertips reach. They start to make this half circle around you. You curl to your right side, to your left side. And then it's the right arm that initiates the movement of curling your back onto your back. And you go from side to side. And the side that you're rolling onto, you can change that arm position in any way you need so that you're not crushing that arm as you roll from side to side. So play with this shape for a bit. 
As you roll to the side, experiment also rolling onto your forehead and maybe even as if you want to look to the space back behind you so you'll get a bit of a neck roll from there. But again, what feels good, what feels comfortable. Good. So I'll go one or two more times. And we'll pause at the center for just a moment. Take a little stock. And we'll add to this, this rolling movement. Can it be a way that rolls us up to seated? So we'll start to the right side again. So the knees drop, the left arm circles, but then it also presses down and rolls you up curls you up to see it and then you give your body weight back down to gravity you roll to the opposite side and curl up to see it so play with that a few times and if you're not in the mood for this you could come back to any of the previous iterations of these of this pattern how softly can you land and can you find the the so-called yielding from the ground that helps you effortlessly to rise. I'll go a few more times. And I'll meet you on your right side once you've kind of curled up to seat and you then have your right knee in this external rotation and the left knee is pointing forward, that thigh is rolled inward. So feel into this seat if you need support under the bum. So we'll find our pelvic rock movement from here. So maybe you faced at a bit of a diagonal, that's fine. You're rocking back on your sit bones and forward on your sit bones. You can also let your upper back curl and your neck move. And right now I'm faced kind of over to the center. But I'll also play with rotating my chest a bit over that right knee. And I'll continue rocking, adding that little twist to it. And I'll also play with turning over towards the left knee, towards the left side a bit as I rock. So these multiple angles accessing as, as many of the um, nooks and corners as possible. Good. Give it a couple of more rounds. And then pause. Take a breath in, take a breath out. And let's do a couple of more investigations from, 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 this, from this seat. So I'll lean forward, I'll use hands at first. I'll come forward and I'll press my thighs down onto the ground to come back up. You could also do that without the hand. Sometimes I place my hands onto the lower back, but start with the hand so that you have control over the movement and then begin to change again the angle of your torso. So I'll experiment leaning over to the right and this is active work for the hips as I, I'm pressing the thigh down on the way down and on the way up and again playing with multiple angles to it. Go a few more rounds with this active work. So either hands on the ground, or as I said, sometimes I place my hands onto my lower back. Excellent. And then pause. And then I want to also feel into the lateral body, so I'll do a little bit of movement adding the upper body, so I'll go from right to left. And also here, notice you could be moving straight on that lateral line. 
or you could add a little bit of curling forward so there's a bit of a rounding play with sensations and what I mean by that is the you take it really depends like where you feel what you feel good we'll do one more round of this excellent again a little pause and then we'll start to find our way back to the ground. I'll offer one more little exploration from, for, for that. So I'll walk my hands over towards the right. So I'll be facing where my head used to be <laughs> when I was lying on the back. But before I go to the ground, I'll ground my right hand and I'll slide my left hand away towards the, that side of my mat. But then begin to play, slide that left hand at different angles. So it could go a little bit over to the left. It could go a little bit over to the right. And again, depending where you feel this. So again, there's this side body opening, right? So a few more rounds. This one can be really nice for some lower back tension works with many of these lines, sideline and these cross body spirals. And then at one point, this movement can start to bring me back towards the ground. So I'll need to thread the right hand under as the left hand reaches forward, it curls around and I end up back on my back. We'll take a little pause before we go over to the other side. So either legs long hmm, or feet on the mat. Maybe gauge for like a sense of aliveness and how does that show up in your experience? So I definitely feel a bit more like a buzz, good type of a buzz through the inner space. What's your connection to the legs, to the hips? And one side of the body probably feels different than the other. Good. And we'll bring the feet onto the mat. We'll take the arms a bit higher up. We'll drop the knees to the left, reaching upward through the right hand, circling it around you, pressing the right hand down, and that'll curl you up to your seat. You adjust again, the right heel can come closer to the bum. You can experiment where that right knee uh, points. It doesn't have to point straight forward. It could go to the side. But once you've settled, then we started with the rocking movement. If you're tilting a lot over to that left side, then having something to sit on can be helpful, like a folded blanket on the under the left bum. Does this side feel different than the other? And in your own way, play with the different angles. So turning over to the left knee for a couple of rounds of this. Turning over towards the right knee. And then having a little pause at the center. From that more fluid work, we'll come to asking for some engagement around the hips. So that's where we'll lean forward, and it could be any amount, but the important is that I'm pressing that left thigh down onto the ground as I lower and as I rise. So use your hands on the ground, or have them on your lap or on your back. And then begin to play with different angles for the torso. I keep sending some weight back to my seat as well, even though I'm coming forward on the, on the sit bones and that right sit bone comes off the ground a little bit. 
move slowly. Perfect, maybe we'll do one more. <sighs> and then pausing again at the center. We've done rotation, forward fold. Let's add also this lateral movement. So bring the hands in as they swing or sway from side to side. And in your own body, find what shapes are interesting. Maybe it is nice to curl a little bit. And so you're going from right to left. Obviously, you can take pauses anywhere where it feels interesting. Good. And then pausing through the center. Have a moment, breath in, breath out. And then you're going to start to face back towards the head side of your mat. <laughs> anyway, you're walking over towards the left. So you're walking the hands back behind you. You keep your left hand grounded as you begin to slide the right hand away. And again, the theme would be to play with different angles. And also different depth, so you don't have to go like chest all the way down on the ground. Coming closer to the left knee, moving away from the left knee. And then at one point, as the right arm slides away, left hand slides under underneath it so that you can one more time make a little curly motion and land on your back. Feet on the mat, legs long. We'll take one more pause here before we move on. Perfect. Bring the knees to your chest again. Right hand on the right knee, left hand on the left knee. Let yourself roll a little bit, maybe this time rolling all the way over to the left side, to the right side. And if it's comfortable, let's do a couple of rocks and rolls also backward and forward. So if your spine is okay with that. So rather than side to side, we'll go forward and back. And then you'll use that motion to come up to seated. If you're still side rolling, roll to one side, come up. Let's uh, swing the legs over, coming to all fours. Let your bum move back towards the heels. Keep the arms reached forward. Curl yourself up to all fours on the inhale. Lift your chest, lift your sit bones, tuck your toes, and press the hips upward towards the ceiling. So downward facing dog. Have a little hip wiggle from downward facing dog. What is possible from here? Circle your rib cage. Slide your shoulders up and down along the back, move your head around, move your jaw around, and then walk your feet over towards the front of your mat. Have them hip distance apart. Let yourself tangle forward, holding onto the opposite elbows. Have a little swing from side to side. So when you swing over to the right, let the left elbow kind of lead a little bit diagonally away from the body over towards that right corner of your mat and then the same on the left side with the right elbow. So there's a little bit of momentum here swinging from side to side. 
And sometimes I like to do that even releasing my elbows and just the straight arm is having a little diagonal reach. And then pause at the center, press your feet down, bounce your sacrum, your hips up and down. So the bounce comes from the knees and my sacrum is bobbing up and down. So creating a bit of like a vibration downward through the spine and also through the legs. If that feels okay, use that little bounce as you start to curl up. If it doesn't, skip the bounce and just curl up without it. Once you're up and standing, see if you can find the bounce again if you left it or keep bouncing for a bit. Soft knees, let your wrist bounce as well, or shake rather, and then have your body turn from side and side to side. The breath could go out a couple of times through a mouth with a sigh. Nice. And then slowly, as you return to the center, let the shaking fade out, fade out, fade out. Take a moment of pause, take a breath in. Take a slow breath out. Uh, and from the top of the mat, float your arms up on the inhale. And let's bow forward, soft knees as you're exhaling. Lift a little bit away from the legs on the inhale and send your right leg to the back of the mat. Take the back knee down onto the ground. Let's curl the spine up, so keep the arms tangling. As you curl, the spine is rounded as if there's like balloons at the backs of your arms, they're gonna lift. And then as you exhale, sink the hips a little bit forward as you draw the arms into that cactus shape. Draw the arms back up and pulse like this a few times. And then play with a wee bit of an angle on the upper body. So rotate a little bit over to your left and also a little bit over to the right. At your own pace. Maybe one more through the center to end and then draw the arms and place them to the inside of that right left foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee and walk your hands halfway towards the back leg so you're coming into a wide legged forward fold. Soften the knees here as you fold in. Maybe again, little small explorative movements. Can your ribs move here from side to side, forward and back? Can your shoulders move here? Shaking your head. And then let's bend the knees to curl up. Similarly, like the arms are tangling as you're curling up, as if there's balloons at the back of the wrists. The arms are gonna float up. And then this time they're just gonna make a circle down. We'll take the warrior two for that left side. So the left foot will point out going to bend that knee. Again, a few times playing with straightening and bending and then grounding the feet, drawing the arms wide and open to the sides. Take a breath in, ground that back foot. <sighs> breath moves out. And then towards the side angle with the elbow coming onto the thighs, as the right arm reaches forward, the heel grounds. And then you turn your chest down towards the ground. Let the arm tangle. And then circle the arm back and up, reaching it up and forward again, pausing in that more lateral shape. 
And then as you face down towards the ground, keep for a moment reaching through the fingers while your chest is facing down a little bit more towards the ground. And do a little pulsing where you reach through the fingers and draw the shoulder back. Reach through the fingers, draw the shoulder back one more. And then let the arm dangle towards the ground. Take both hands on either side of that left leg, rotate the back heel up, and then step the back leg forward to the front of the mat. Keep the knee soft. If you enjoyed the bounce, add a little bit of a bounce. If you enjoyed more that holding the elbows and playing with the diagonals, kind of elbow reaching to the opposite diagonal of the mat, or maybe you just want to hang here for a bit, feeling the ribs and softening the knees enough so that you can start your journey up. Again, maybe there's some bounce, maybe not. When we come to standing, I'll stay bouncing for a bit, maybe some shoulder rolls. <sighs> and then a moment of pause. Next breath floats the arms up. Exhale, bows you forward. A little bit of a reaching away from the legs on the inhale as the left leg finds a place to the back of the mat and the back knee comes down. I'm going to curl my spine up again. So that same movement where the arms are tangling. My spine is rounding. There's balloons at the back of my wrists as the arms float upward. And then uh, see, sinking the hips forward into those cactus arms. Little pulsing here, going away, pressing away from the ground and then a bit towards and playing with some rotation over to the right, through the center, over to the left. Could be really small alternations in the angle of the torso. I'll let the last one be kind of facing forward. I'll lower the hands to the inside of that right leg so the back toes can tuck, knee can lift. I'll make the walk over, halfway over, into a wide-legged forward fold. Pausing here again, having a little moment of folding in in stillness or playing with rib movement, shoulder movement, weight shifting forward and back. What do those little shifts, what are the sensations they can create? Getting ready to curl up, so soft knees. Again, you could take a rounded back and those balloon arms lifting and circling down. The warrior two turns to the right, so the right toes point away. Take your, take your way of landing in the shape. Are those micro movements helpful where you just kind of play a little bit? Your ribs, ooh, my shoulders. So I'm not just, boom, um, assuming that position, but I'm really coming present into these different parts that make up the shape. And of course, at one point, it is also interesting to be still, to pause, to find the strength in your legs, the roots, the hugging in through the thighs. Is there still access to ease and softness while we're here? And we played with the side angle by finding the lateral line, reaching through the heel and through the fingertips, playing with rounding the spine forward, maybe for a moment letting the arm dangle towards the ground, letting it circle back and up so we cover different angles for that shoulder. And then I did a moment where I'm turning towards the ground and I'm 
reaching through the fingertips, but the action is coming from the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade is kind of like flossing, gliding along the rib cage. Give it another breath. And then let the left hand come down, left heel lift, right hand come down. This time, downward facing dog with some wiggles or with stillness. Breath in, breath out. We'll do our flow from here to come forward to plank. If you need to have the Knees down, give it a moment in the plank pose. And if you want to play with some angles here, what I like to do sometimes is I drop my heels to the left and I drop my heels to the right. If your knees are down, you can pick your feet up and do the same here by dropping the feet from side to side. So there's a little bit of a wiggle. And then we'll lower to the ground. We'll give the full front body weight to the ground for a moment, so maybe hands come under your forehead. And we'll curl up into a cobra a few times so you can play with the hand position. You could do one where the hands are under the shoulders, head can stay hanging as you curl up and the head can be the last to lift. And then lowering but also consider bringing the hands off the mat. Maybe it's fingertips down, so we create those spider hands. What changes if I bring my arms, hands slightly forward? And then also what if I move the hands a little bit more to the left or to the right? And I'll do the last one through the center, finding a height that works for your back, pausing, little shoulder movements here, deciding how much to press the feet down, the pubic bone, one more breath. Exhale, lower, press up to all fours. Take the hands under the shoulders, round your back, round your back, round your back, curl your tailbone under, stay in this rounded shape and take a breath into the back body. Exhale, float the heel, the float the bum back towards the heels, hands reaching forward. And one more breath to the back body here. Actually let your elbows drop to the ground so the arms are resting. Breath to the back body. And then return to all fours, swing your legs over to one side so that you can sit to that bum cheek and bring your legs forward. You can from here either come to take the right leg forward in front, either cross-legging from the ankles, cross your legs from your shin bones, so more um, heel in line with the hip, for some of you, maybe there is an option of the right knee on top of the left knee. Don't force any of it. And we'll come to a forward fold. I'll come in with the same way like we've been doing. I'll, I'll have a little moment of playing with angles, torso angles, allowing for some rib movement perhaps, neck and shoulder movement. So there is a stillness here, but that stillness stays with some micro pulsings, micro investigations. There might be a moment where you pause and then you might change the angle. So we'll take about a minute or so on, on each side. So right now, right leg forward. So spend the time to feel into different parts of this shape. 
Where is there more sensation showing up? What is today? What's, what's needed today? More softness, more ease, backing off. Or a little bit of a facing a challenge and leaning in to what's there. Take another breath. And then take your time to change the legs around as you curl up. Do they need a little shake out? Do they need a little moment? And then find the shape that works with the left leg forward. So idea is to move less from habit, even when we've been, especially when we've been practicing for a while, we kind of know the shapes and it's, it's easier to, to lose the beginner's mind there. And so more moving from presence, from uh, connection to what's here, right now, in this moment, this breath, this sensation. And not assuming that, that we know what's the, what's the best course of action. So a couple of more breaths and how can the movements be more about leaning in towards what's here, like more about curiosity of what's here. Sometimes our movement can be a fidgety movement of trying to get away. See if there's a change in orientation when we want to move towards rather than away. And take your time. If you're enjoying where you're at, you might explore a bit longer. We are at the end of the session, so you can choose to lie down for a couple of minutes. I'll hold space for that. If you want to continue at your own pace, then feel free to uh, leave the session or silence me. You could lie down, you could also take a moment in seated meditation. So as I said, I'll hold space for a couple of minutes. Find a closure, find an ending that supports you best right now. So 
stay connected to your direct experience moment to moment as you notice the sensations, how they change from coming out of the shapes and finding something easeful, natural, neutral. Be aware of your thoughts as they arise in the same way that you are aware of the breath as it moves or the sounds that are coming from your environment. So we don't have to give the heady stuff the priority, it can be there. Even and equal to other parts of what we're experiencing in this moment. Just for a moment, we'll also soften away from trying to control. So your breath is free to move as it moves. Your sensations are rising and dissolving. Maybe a glimpse of an access to this um, allowing, natural allowing for things to be as they are. Open, spacious awareness. holding what is. And when you are ready to move into your day from here, whether you're seated or lying down, could that next movement also arise from that sense of um, ease and allowing. So we kindly, softly find um, our way back to our seat if you were lying down and having a moment of noticing what are we harvesting from this practice? What's alive and in the foreground? Is there a natural intention that maybe rises as you tune in, as you listen, as you ask how would you want to move into your week? What can lead you? What could guide you? What could be the quality that you want to bring into your um, week from here. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much from me. <laughs> <laughs>